pretty nice place, kind of hot. What are we doing out here today? Today we're going to take a look at one of the few electrical station wagons you can find on the market. This is one such option and this is the MG5 SW EV. Let's take a look. Starting off in front, you get this huge grill. It's actually not that big, but it looks big. It's pretty imposing. And these chrome trims along the, along the front that, that cut out this gloss black, they look, they look really imposing. They give you a lot of road presence. It actually reminds me of like a Honda Stream, a Honda Odyssey, that, boom, that fridge. But here you get your charge port. Unlike its MG siblings, this one opens to the side. AC, DC, like the band, and then LED lights in front, your signals, everything's in here. You don't have front forks, but this plastic. Ah, at least it's not fake vents. Onto the side, you follow these lines that accentuate the shape of the station wagon. 16 inch rims that are painted so they don't look just like plain factory steel, not too bad. Keyless entry at the side, along with many, many chrome trims and roof rails on this station wagon. So it's very, very useful. In case there's 495 liter boot space, it's not enough. The middle compartment is not enough. You still get roof rails, so you can put bicycle, you can put roof box, you can put your entire house. You know how they shift, like, like in cartoon, they shift house, everything on top. Also can. Onto the back. Onto the rear of the MG5, you get spoiler, sporty, electric, fast. So you want spoiler for downforce on this station wagon. High mount brake light, which I really like. It's a nice touch. Good job, MG. And then this curve here, like, like it's like a rounded, like a curb. The funny thing is the MG is also rounded, it's not something that you usually see. You get your combination LED lamps here, big chrome strip, and then a button for the manual boot, which is not electric, ironic, but to unleash 495 liters worth of boot space. Actually, it will not pass the anti trolley length test, just by a little bit, but the boot is rather high because the battery is underneath. But because it's a station wagon, you get so much space, and to show you, we're just gonna we brought the whole circus with us. Knock down the seats from here, over the false cover. And then you can just stuff as much stuff as you need. Anti trolley, luggage. So you go shopping, right? And then you go holiday with the luggage. And then you go play golf on the holiday shopping. Many, many space. And then maybe you go halfway, tired. You want to camp. No problem. And then you can meet your car enthusiast friend, they say, EV, I want my ba 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 ba, I want my vroom. <laughs> EV, what's so cool? And then you pull up. These bad boys, any car enthusiast would know. From Decathlon. So much space. And then that's not even all because, but that's everything that we pilfered from the office. So everything inside. And then you just close it. Perfect. Utility! <clears throat> Onto the rear. The MG5 SW is priced from $158,000 to $168,000 in two trims. The MG5 SW uses a permanent magnet synchronous motor to produce 161 brake horsepower and 260 newton meters of torque. The one speed automatic transmission brings the car from 0 to 100 km per hour in 8.8 .8 seconds. The battery capacity of the MG5 SW is rated at 61.1 kilowatt hours with a drive range of 403 kilometers. For more details on the MG5 SW or any other car, head on to sgcarmart.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. Inside the rear, the first thing you notice is that it sits rather high because the battery is down below, so the floor is higher up. But that given, uh, actually the head space is still Give, considering that, I think it's not bad, honestly, but someone like John would probably suffer. I am 1.75, so that gives you some context. Leg space, knee space is okay, actually. You don't get to really tuck your feet underneath the driver's seat, and as you can tell. like You see from a seating position, you can see that the in front seat is actually lower. And then now, onto the middle, you get cup holder, armrest, nice touch. Uh, Isofix points, of course, uh, station wagon wouldn't make sense without Isofix. In the middle, you don't get aircon vents, you get two USB-A charging 
point. Actually, hold that. You do get aircon vents. You put your hand here, you can actually feel the cool air coming, but I, why, why, why is it down there? I don't know, MG, in the space in the middle though. No transmission tunnel, but you see my big feet kind of barely fit. They can tuck, they can't really tuck, but I think for most people it'll be fine. I have big feet. In the middle, a fat person like me, probably not too comfortable in long drives, but can is can. It can squeeze five, but usually four is more comfortable. Now onto the front. Inside the driver's seat, immediately the first thing you notice is still the battery underneath. So it is a rather elevated driving position. I'm 175, I still think I can look out fine. Uh, head, head space is okay, but then the steering wheel, it is, um, it's not super luxurious, but it is leather wrapped, uh, hard leather. And the plastics on the steering wheel, I think, is a point to talk about because while it is plastics, I don't know what it is about it, but the springs, the things inside feel good to press. And this is really important because it's something that I'm going to be using every single day. So I don't know what they're doing with it. I don't know what they've done with it, but the buttons feel good to press. And that's not something that I can say about every car. Now the stocks here are scratchy plastic, but certain it, certain parts you do get soft touch rubber like here. So I think for that in that in that sense it does really well. Now down to the center console you get wired Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You can also select your car settings, things like the safety systems within the car. It's all adjustable with this unit here. Now wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. There's no wireless charging or place to to, to place your phone. But you get, at first I thought it was, you know, it, it might get messy because there's a phone holder here. I like this vertical phone holder. But then you don't want your wire to kind of just mess up your gear shift, your air condition buttons. So actually, this is something cool. You can plug your phone and then there's a phone holder here. So you just leave it. There's one on the driver's side as well. So you can leave it. You can plug in your Android Auto. So you never have to worry. It doesn't obstruct the other things. Now onto the center console. Two large cup holders here. One small, one bigger one, and it's kind of deep so it can hold my bottle just fine. You can also put your phone slot here, electronic parking brake and brake auto hold, and a little cubby space here. Now you have to get some, a little bit getting used to because you can't really open it just like this, but at least it can stand by itself. You just have to be careful with the momentum. Now the instrument panels, it's half analog, half digital, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in our drive, speaking of. Let's take this thing out for a ride. Did you know that if you're trading in your car, you could be earning up to $5,000 less? For example, if you're thinking about getting this brand new MG5 SW, try selling your car to SG Karma Quotes instead. They'll use their network of dealers to get you the best price possible. What's more, if you manage to sell your car for more than the price that they quote you, you'll get $100 from Quotes. So why not? But don't just take our word for it. Look at the hundreds of successful reviews on their page. To find out more, visit quotes.com.sg. That's Q-U-O-T-Z.com.sg. Now on with the review. Now we are inside the MG5 EV station wagon SW. This is the 154 brake horsepower variant with a bigger with a bigger battery. Um, I don't know why you get a bigger battery, but slightly slightly reduced horsepower. But because it's an electric vehicle, it's still plenty of torque. Right now we are at 90 kilometers per hour on the PPE uh, AYE Pongo there whatever. Um, and then there's a little bit of wind noise, a little bit at. 90, 95. Um, to be honest, I'm not that bothered by it because only right now that we're filming that you hear it. Because if not, you have your music on, you can plug it in for, for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or you have the radio on and you won't hear it. Everything is pretty decent and in this car, it has what MG calls MG Pilot. So it's the amalgamation of all the safety systems like lane keeping assist, active cruise control. So it comes together for a pretty low package inside this electric car which I feel is the crux of this car like what makes it like I really like it because 
at this price, you get a car, a station wagon that's built solidly. It's not like leather, luxury everywhere, but it does things well. This is what I really like about cars that, that, that they're not expensive, but they make you feel appreciated. Like, yes, plastic, plastic, but then you get this kind of gloss, piano black, shiny black plastic, and it feels nice. It feels luxurious. You're like, oh wow, it really does. And the shine of these knobs, these buttons, makes you want to hold it, put a knob in your hand, you know? What did he say? And then the center dials, they are using the same ones, same setup as within the MGHS. So it's like the dials that are on its side, that, but then they half integrate it with the big LED display, which I really like it. So it's using half analog, which some people like. I prefer full digital, but then they integrate it with the digital part of the display and it comes together really well. So on the right, I have my charge efficiency boost meter. On the left, I have my speedo. And then in the middle, they kind of fill up the other part of the circle with like charge percentage of your battery. Right now, I'm at 80, 87% uh, charge percentage of the, of the battery. And then you also have the voltage of the battery. I don't know what that means. I, I don't know. I, and then I can toggle off over to like my trip computer, how many kilometers I'm doing, uh, how many kilowatt hours, which is the energy consumption per 100 km. So you can tell, oh, am I doing an efficient drive or rather sportier drive? So if you do so wish to go into, there's three modes, eco, normal, sport. Even in eco, you're going to get plenty of torque. It's not a performance car, but it's plenty for everyday driving. And I really like that about this car. One thing about EVs is that I like that you get access to instant torque because who doesn't want power? But this is this delivers and, and it, it makes it really pleasant to drive if you if you want to shift down. Um, oh, there's one thing about the, the instrument cluster, right? So there's a little letter at the bottom to tell you which which mode you're in. So there's E for eco, N for normal, and then S for sport. So, but also there's an accompanying graphic within the center and it just doesn't keep up so like i'm right now i'm toggling up to spot the let, little letter at the bottom tells me i'm in spot already i can feel it from the pedal response but the little graphic in the middle is still like playing catch up with that so that's a bit weird uh, but it's no big deal on a full charge i believe you can get somewhere around north of 400 kilometers uh, in eco mode and I think that's more than plenty because this is bigger than its its uh, sibling, the ZS, which uh, which did well for an EV, but this one is just bigger battery, so you get less of a range anxiety, you get more uh, allowance to kind of yeah maybe I want to charge. Oh yeah, I'm running out of charge. Can I charge tomorrow because I have a big battery? And that's good. That's what you want inside an EV. Right quality. I'm pleased. So like right now, whew, overtaking, no problem. And then it, it's it's pretty heavy because the battery is down below. So your center, center of gravity is down low. You don't really, probably not a car you want to swing around 99 bends, but that's not to say that it can't. I mean, it's a front wheel drive, so you're not, at times when you floor it, you already can tell that the wheels are starting to push more than the road can handle. Still, for everyday driving, because it's a station wagon, so you, I mean, unlike the Cupra Leon Sports Tour, this is a car that's for the everyday family. So I think it, it, it has enough power, it's very comfortable, and it's a really pleasant drive. I like it. Is this car will buy, won't buy, go try? It's a funny thing because I would have said this car is a will buy because I would buy this car. It's delivering so much and utility, power, comfort, right? But mm, the funny thing is recently the government said Abra abracadabra and then they changed the COE laws to encourage adoption of electric vehicles. They've pushed, they've expanded the power band of electric vehicles. So now cars, electric vehicles can go up to about 147 horsepower for Cat A, which for ICE cars or rather petrol cars or hybrid cars, it's limited to the usual 130. So now that pushes the MG ZS, which is uh, the sibling of this car, into Cat A, which makes it instantly $30,000 more affordable. 
then you're left with the dilemma of do I save thirty thousand dollars for a little bit less power, or do I spend a little bit more, get a little bit, a lot more practicality, a little bit more fun? That's why for me this car is go try. So this has been our review of the MG5 EV SW. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Uh, let us know down in the comments below anything you think that we missed out on or anything that you disagree with us on this car. Hmm, uh, I, don't, I don't like what you said. Also let us know down in the comments below because we do take our time to read these comments. And also, if you've made it this far, consider subscribing to us because we can see that quite, quite a few of you watching aren't actually subscribed to us and that will help a lot. So, Please give us a subscribe and also follow us at TikTok on at SG Karma. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Ryan, get some bureau. The lane keeping is yes. Don't <laughs> no to show you why the MG5 SW EV is actually such a family car. Because look, it attracts families literally. That's probably not the kind that can drive unless hey, you got got license or not? Probably not.